This is a, um, a middle-aged racing, uh, sort of recently uh, adopted greyhound that broke its hock, um, broke its hock uh, running around and has got a comminuted central tarsal bone and sort of calcaneal base fracture. So we're going to begin by doing a medial incision that allows us room to reduce the calcaneal, uh, the central tarsal bone and then we'll come around laterally and repair the uh, buttress, the, the whole thing. Um, uh, so we can sort of feel the deficit there. So we'll have a screw that goes this way, we may have a screw that goes that way. So that cranial screw ends up being about here. So we'll make our incision in this location with the awareness that um, there's gonna be some real wound challenges in, in this breed. So there is a little tendon that runs over the top of it that it would be nice to protect if we can. This dog's not going back to a racing future. It's going back to be the pet that it was when it injured itself. Hopefully slightly smarter. So you can see there the base of the talus. So that's how bones popped out sideways. Um, there's a comminution in through there, so we'll need to try and reduce that manually. So a bit of traction. Yeah, just hold that stitch. So. so you can see that bone with a little bit of traction is coming into play. So. help it along with some point to points and a bit of manual traction again going to look at the adjacent joint surfaces to get a feel for when we've appropriately reduced the fracture. I think this uh, this part of the surgery is important because it gives you good um, inherent stability and also uh, confirmation of appropriate reduction. Because at the end of the day, it's uh, this is the injury that sort of created the domino effect. Suction. And there is a uh, dorsal component to it in this dog as well. But the major piece has come off the, the medial aspect. So we've still got a bit of a gap at the, at the, at the distal aspect.
सिस्टम है That coming in. Exception. So I'll just see if we can see the cranial fragment as well. Uh, which looks like it's sitting just here. So I think we've still got this male reduced at the moment. It's looking a lot better now. Let's see if we can cinch it down a bit more. It's nice to get this done as best as we can to help with the stability of our ultimate repair. Because there, it's in so many pieces, it's, it doesn't click in sort of perfectly well. just wants to collapse inwardly. If we can concurrently see the cranial and click that in at the same time, it's a nice peace of mind. I think with CT, you just realise how many of these are highly comminuted. Suction. So that's the dorsal piece just there, which looks like it's aligning into that actually quite nicely, so might try and put a small little positional or lag screw through that and then run our larger implant across the top. Just need to be careful of sword fighting that follows. So. Where do we want to place our where do we want to place our um, implants which position is most important? Um, probably uh, ensuring that we're nice and distal on our medial to lateral screw is going to be key. So we'll put a little smaller screw dorsally on a cranial fragment. Probably just use a little 2.0 positional screw 
because I don't think there's a lot of bone to anchor it to. suction sitch so we can see what we're doing. So somewhere up the top there looks good. See that's not in much solid bone because all the comminution that's occurred on the plantar aspect. We have pre-measured the. Oh, can we get our templating up, please? Pre-measured the length of that screw. Um, so that measures about 20, which I think fits with the 22 that we templated. So we'll go with the 22 cortical. I haven't got point to points on this bit of bone because I'm conscious of splitting it. Um, it doesn't mean that this is going to be imperfectly positioned, but we're really just trying to create a buttress of implants here. come out of there So common you did. So we'll take that where that is. Yeah, it's not going to be perfect, but it's just a starting point for this. So I'll put a 2 4 positional screw across.
This should be a um, double-ended drill guide, hey? Uh, oh, there it was. Okay, let's take the two, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. So I just appreciate where our bone and joint is. And we'll go across the base while missing that screw. Measures 20, what's that? 26. So we'll put a 26 in because we're conscious that we have implants needing to go on the other side. We don't want to interfere with that too much. 26, 2, 4 cortical. What's this guy weigh? 28 kilos. Yeah, so he's not the big, not a big, big greyhound. He's only 28 kilos. So when these are really highly comminuted, sometimes you can place a bone plate buttressing, but it becomes a great logistical challenge with the soft tissues at that point. Get some 3O monocryl. Pretty sensitive. No, it's all right. It'll just have to go through a licensing review with YouTube. Oh. <laughs> uh, what I have noticed though um, is that it catches my breathing, and I'm clearly a fat <laughs> bastard because I sit there during all the surgeries going. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I didn't know that I was, I was so, so respiratory driven, yeah. Like a bracky. <laughs> like a bracky. That's harsh. All the photos on the channel are like, doctored anyway, so. <laughs> it would be uh, successful in a Mike Myers movie, I think. So we're just going to close this now so that we don't have to um, battle uh, uh, kind of two closures and the tension associated with that. Um, I think this is one of the greatest challenges of this whole journey is managing the soft tissue tension and a release incision is not uncommon. It just brings with it a whole bunch of um, logistical kind of effort in terms of coordinating the owners and although it's not relevant in this case the you know typical kind of greyhound trainers got a lot of commitments for those dogs and it's difficult to always get them to return for appointments so um, we definitely will dress this with a soft padded uh, for a few weeks just while it swells and hopefully we don't need to do a releasing incision but we're uh, far from the end of the surgery to know the decision on that yet. Um, if, uh, if it does need a releasing incision, then it changes the management quite dramatically. Sometimes just leaving it for 12 hours and reviewing the following day is the way to go because what, what looks horrible to begin can look better and vice versa. But I don't think we need to place a plate over this because 
We're gonna get an effective fixation on the lateral side, hopefully. You can see this dog's already got excoriations simply from the pressure that's building up kind of post-trauma. So they're beautiful dogs, but they're absolutely abysmal when it comes to soft tissues. Very fortunate in Queensland, it doesn't apply to this dog, but in, in other parts of Australia that there's now the Greyhound Injury Rebate Scheme, which um, is a fantastic initiative and allows us to fix things that otherwise might not get, get repaired. All right, so let's try and get this done. Do you wanna, um, where's your best, do you wanna go on that side, Sitch? So we don't wanna have too extensive an incision. I think I always already feel that screw coming through there. Um, oh, don't worry about the mat, mate, it's all good, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so we know that we want a plate to go sort of mid calcaneus to proximal toe, so we'll do our incision about that long, conscious that it's really tight here before we've done anything. So we'll have an incision that sits on the plantar aspect such that where the plate sits, which will be here, the incision won't be there. So we don't want to close our incision on top of the, on top of the, um, on top of the implant, so. All right. Those forceps. Itch. A bit awkward, is that? Really, the smaller the incision we can make, the better. Can we get um, an oscillating saw, please? Get that 15 blade. We don't routinely give these dogs any um, any uh, transamic acid. Uh, I know some practices do. We do a lot of greyhound surgery. Um, don't see that that's regularly indicated. Yeah, thank you. So we're just going to get the oscillating saw so that um, we can create a smooth sort of flat surface for our plate to reduce the tension on the soft tissues. You can do it with a burr as well. Um, the burr is just a little bit more cumbersome when it comes to opening more equipment, so this is a little bit more user friendly. So we'll just take off the kind of top part of the metatarsal. Um, what we do need to do is, you can sort of see on all that fibrous tissue, uh, we need to find this calcaneal fragment, which looks like he's just under there somewhere. So the calcaneus hasn't obliterated itself, but in the process of the central tarsal fracturing, the calcaneus has um, been sort of pummeled by the proximal displacement. And uh, it would be worth, you feel like you're getting pushed over, Sitcha. 
More gym yeah. sessions. More gym sessions. So you can see that little calcaneal fragment coming into play and it's not really part of the weight bearing component of this repair because our plate's going to be more sort of caudal or plantar in, in position but um, I think it makes sense to try and put it back on if we can. Hopefully without creating too much soft tissue harm. Suction. Try and create some vision up there. Let's get some saline. Those baby gulps. Let's have a feel, mate. I don't think there's actually that obvious a fracture line because it's like a slither of bone. So let's try with some point to points and see if it'll look like we can click it in. The other ones, the other shaped ones. Ah, uh, sorry, the big ones, but the sort of more encompassing ones. Can you see it? I think it just goes there. I think because we've reduced the central tarsal, there's not much left. I think we'll just put a positional screw in that. Just a small, let's just go a two. Can we see the other views so without the templating? Even if you drag that image into the middle. Into, sorry, into, oh, it's all right. So the words are useless, so we drag that image. Yeah, there's nothing useful. Um, can we see the cranial cordal of that one? Of the broken leg, the left leg? Okay, thank you. So we'll just do a lateral to medial positional screw with a two mil. Suction stitch, and this is going to go into the talus. Hopefully, that's not too distal in the joint space, but that's the risk. I don't think implants across the joint with this injury is that big a deal. I think it's such a catastrophic injury that there's going to be so much periarticular fibrosis that it gets an ankylosis across these low motion joints anyway. 26. So we'll put a 2026 in and then we'll contour our plate to buttress the whole job. Hey mate. Yeah. Thank you for the suction. Ah, oh, shit. Can you grab that screw off the floor, please, mate? Let's 
try and find that hole again. Take that out for me. Just gently, just gently give it a wiggle. Come back, yep. Good job. <laughs> uh, some days are better than others. I don't even know if this is in the hole at this point. Can you support the leg? That might be a good way to do it. I fear that I've gone a little bit too distal and across the joint space here, but again, I don't think that's a big consequence. It'll still be in firm bone. So what we'll do next is we'll take off um, the proximal part of that fifth metatarsal to create a flat surface with the oscillating saw, and then we'll contour our plate. Do you want to see if that plate press is ready? Feel that coming through already, so it might be a tad long, but I think we'll be okay. So, again, this is probably not a critical part of the repair, but I think will help with the overall healing and stability. So, I've got a bit of bone here that we need to take off, and a bit of bone there. So we'll start with this one. The Ceylon, uh, flip him around. Our forceps. Aha. Dr. Bird. Good, how are you? So that's your central task of bone screw? No, no, we've already done that. Um, so that's uh, that little slither of calcaneus. Oh, right, sorry. There is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we've just cut off the top of his metatarsal to give, a, give us a bit of a surface to plate onto and then we'll cut this guy off to create a bit more of a contour here as well. I wonder if I should have thrown this fragment in the bin. Would have made a nice flat surface. Maybe that's what we do next time. <laughs> fix it and then cut it.
Can we get some rondeurs? We might actually be okay, we'll just see what we've got. Yeah. I think that'll do. Looks like a pretty smooth surface to play with. What do you think, Sitch? That's pretty good. So you do a little approach immediately for the... Yeah, so we've just done a um, little incision there. We've got a two and a two four that way. Um, and then, yep. Yeah. Uh, um, I think we're okay, actually. Yeah. Sorry. I genuinely think that piece might be better off in the bin. Anyway, we've committed. We've committed at this stage. What do you say? You better off. Well, I just wonder this little slither that we put on. Like, I wonder if I just put it in the bin, then it'll be nice and flat. <laughs> anyway, that's that looks pretty good. So let's see if we can fit that plate on. You always warn that these plates, like the plates, are going to have to be removed, most likely. Uh, no, just that there's going to be wound challenges and potential for infection, but I wouldn't default remove the plate. Yeah, okay. Jason was saying yesterday he thinks that half the greyhounds need the implants out, doesn't he? But I don't know. I don't think we know. Like. I think that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy if you recommend implant removal on every other one that they, if they do well then they did well because you took the implants out but maybe they were just going to do well. Yeah. So we've got a 9 hole 2 4 LCP here. If we can get three screws into the metatarsal it would be good. And then a couple everywhere else. So, what do you think, Sitch? A bit of a squish down there. So we're just going to try and contour this so that um, we're reducing the soft tissue demands on closure because they're mainly going to be applied as a locking implant so they're not so critical from a stability perspective. I think there's some experts at doing this. One of the colleagues at the practice who's just retired, Jason Beck, he's done a, a lot of these and he's meticulous. He can do a fantastic job of contouring, but when it came up in the days when he didn't contour, uh, when everything needed contouring perfectly, so don't quite have that skill set. There's a balance of surgical time and contouring. Just wants to bleed. So we can see the joint space at the tarso metatarsal. Can you see that sitch that opening? Oh, yeah. So, and I think what's interesting is, you know, it's almost inherently stable with that central tarsal bone. It doesn't want to collapse. There's still play. So if these, uh, you know, if you wanted to just cast it at this point, that would be an option, but it's not an entirely enjoyable process in a greyhound. So I think that contouring is kind of reasonable and we test the soft tissues, I think we can get them closed. So one of the things that I've learnt is not to do an incision too distal, because then it gets harder and harder to close. So we can sort of move that a little bit if we need to, but. And then um, I'll probably place this majority locking. Yeah, because it's pretty well contoured, pretty well positioned, I think. Maybe a cortical there. Let's go with a cortical at the top of the metatarsal. So remember that the metatarsals fan out like a U-shape, so you can't reasonably get across all four of them, and anyone that tries is kind of not being entirely genuine. So... So 
So I'm not sure if that's across all four or whether we've got three and missed one, but depth gauge. We'll take that. We've chosen a cortical uh, to uh, reduce how far we have to go with our plate. Because that cortical screw is a bit closer, it measures a 28. Might put a 26 in just to avoid it poking through the skin. the risk that that's gone across uh, across the joint space as well but it's not of great consequence we might put a cortical here as well at the guide can you put the guide in there and push down for neutral and drop your hand towards the floor Bit more towards the floor. I don't know where that went to be honest, but <laughs> it's uh, in something solid. We've got a 20, 26. And then we'll get 3O monocrawl to close, please. Uh, yeah, we'll need, need another one. We'll do a locking 2-4 here. See what this is. Have to pull this plate down a little bit. How the leg? That locking guide. Something I think. Do you place these open acid? No, I don't think so. Do you think we should? No, no. We haven't done that for a long time and had six there. I don't know if it's really cold. I don't think we need that across all the toes. Go, uh, go on 18 lock stitch. Death cage. Straight, which is good. Just lock a few at the top and a few at the bottom and call it quits. Thanks, guy. Let's see what I'm trying to make. So that one's in the um, uh, kind of mid proximal part of the calcaneus there. Put a 14, I think. Such. Um, so yeah, ultimately we want to have kind of, I guess, three above and three below the problem. Tighten that by hand. And um, you know, the two four plate, I think, is plenty of metal for this dog. It's sort of lower profile. You could. Um, 
potentially use two seven screws and the two four plate that kind of gives a lower profile plate with the slightly larger core diameter of the of the two seven implant um, uh, we haven't chosen to do that today but that's that's a very good kind of option remembering that the you know area moment of inertia AMI of the implant is proportional to the size of its shaft and it's raised to the power of four so we get a lot of bang for our buck by going up a little bit so 22 I think Which sounds long but I think we're in a bit of stuff there Oh, we've got a yeah, two screwdriver heads. Great. So if we put a lock screw in there, that's below the calcaneus which will be in the fourth, so that's probably a useful bit of anchorage to have. That looks like a good idea. I think that's where it is. Maybe not, maybe that's one more space below is the way to go. So then just see our joint there, which is around that hole there, so we'll go above that. So this will be in our fourth. I think that's getting very close to the central tarsal bone implant, so we'll just put a little monocortical in. We just put a 12, 12 in, the advantage of locking screws in this location. Put another locking down in the metatarsal. Thank you. Seems like a lot. I just don't think you need to go across everything. I just don't think that's important. 22. Pretty stable fixation so we'll close up at this point and get some post-op rads hopefully not have too much stability closing our soft tissues I'll just hand tighten these and make sure we're happy the two mil screwdriver What do you think? You're going to have luck closing or no? It's a long pause. It's a long pause. It's not, not quite, not quite the enthusiasm I was looking for. So I think just getting a really superficial subcut layers, almost you know just shy of an intradermal is the way to go. It's the only way you can get these closed I think if you go sort of deep like you typically would do you just don't have have enough material to work with and this fracture is a little bit of a choose your own adventure there's sort of lots of potential ways or methods of repairing it lots of different implant types um, I think this is a pretty dependable way of doing it. Mm -hmm. This is 
like unwrapping your Christmas presents on Christmas Day. Like, am I gonna enjoy this or is it gonna be a painful finding? But so far so good. So Char can take a negativity elsewhere. Well, you haven't received present you haven't received presents from my grandma, it's exactly the same. It's an absolute crapshoot. Oh look looks good, Sitch. Looks good. Might be prematurely excited. No, that's not fair. My grandma gave me a fantastic gift this Christmas. I got a hamper that we're gonna use camping this weekend. A hamper, like a bit of bit of biscuit, bit of cheese, bit of wine, bit of bit of all things good. Send her a picture when you eat. I can, she's despite being in the late eighties, she's quite tech savvy. One of the first Facebook commenters on the Facebook photos, which is good. How does she keep track or how do I keep track? That's how she keeps track. That's how she keeps track, yeah. I'm not like I'm a good communicator about that stuff. Oh, it's getting tight. So, it's one of the advantages of not having the skin incision down the bottom end of the plate. Get some 4 skin, please. Oh. A little bit tight, a little bit tight, but very reasonable, I think. Hey, do I edit them? Yeah. Oh, minimally? Yeah, I think if I know that there's like something that, like waiting for that plate before, I just took that a few minutes out, but it's just not gonna have the time to do it sort of thoroughly, I guess. I just think something's better than nothing, but. I wanna, rather than present a kinda sexy version of all the little steps, give a more realistic version of the journey. Yeah. You know, it's easy to condense the surgery into 10 minutes if you crop it, but you know, not everything goes smoothly, does it? Yeah. I think it's nice to be, be realistic about that. I think it's also nice to have the radiographs um, before and after. Some people just post the surgery video and I think it's not, not really the whole journey. What's that, mate? Yeah, and then just posting them on a local forum to get a bit of viewership, and then I guess if it grows, there might be might be um, oh, 90 subscribers. Come on, I'm YouTube famous. Um, it might turn it into something a little bit more didactic and structured later, but see what the interest is. It's also nice for the lecturing that I do to have stuff captured, so my primary motivation is just to accumulate this footage for lectures to be honest so and if i can make it not too comp not too labor intensive to quickly put it together and post it then like that sacral uh, the ileal fracture the other day just the method of reduction you know we always lecture on the concept and show these static pictures but having actual imagery you know clinical imagery of it happening, I think. And you never think to take it when you need it. So if I just record everything for the next bit, then hopefully we'll get lots of good content. And because I've done a bit of teaching, a lot of the people that have come to courses are commenting and giving feedback. And I've had some nice emails saying that they've you know, learnt stuff and appreciated the content, so. 
Yeah, it's nice and rewarding. I suspect it won't be a source of uh, my retirement, however. <laughs> Unlike Mark Rober, the YouTube star. I don't know who that is. He's the guy that does those, um, I don't know if you ever saw, he did the videos on the um, people stealing parcels and he did like glitter bombs and stuff. That was him. Yeah, and he runs this, he's an engineer by, by trade and uh, he runs this thing called Crunch Labs, which is like these little packs for kids. And so Kaido's getting to an age where we might subscribe to that and in little experiments you can do at home, pretty cool. So I think that's pretty good. I think the tension's reasonable. There is tension there. That's where we did the point to point. So we'll just leave that as a little pop-off valve and we'll see what our rads look like. Might um, keep the table if we can.